This is Greg with the Abstract Podcast, and today we have Jake Dunlap, CEO of Scaled. So Jake, if you can uh, take a moment to introduce yourself, sir. What is going on, man? Excited. Thank you. I'm looking forward to this conversation. It's very near and dear to my heart as I get up there as well. Um, <laughs> so I'm the CEO of Scaled Consulting. We're a leading, um, I think the leading modern sales consulting firm. Really what that means is we're working with a mix of growth stage organizations, enterprise organizations, helping them to modernize components of their sales process and methodology, uh, sales technology stack, um, and sales infrastructure. So really just how do you think about scaling um, post this kind of new new world that we're in and, and the, the different ways that we've kind of ignored for a long time. How do you optimize all this, you know, technology that you've invested in? And then how do you, you know, invest in a sales methodology that's not, you know, 25, 30 years old? And so we're, part, we're partnering with leaders to, to implement those processes. And really uh, our kind of secret sauce is, is the tactical, man. I worked with consultants in the past. I got sick of getting handed a pamphlet of like 500 pages and saying, good luck. <laughs> and, you know, our, our, our team, our team gets really tactical and in the weeds and helps with the execution. So that's what we're up to. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm a uh, I've, I've big fan of, of scaled and hopefully one day, you know, maybe can uh, afford you guys to, to come on board and make sure we're optimized. <laughs> so there we go. we're going to be talking today about teaching old dogs, new tricks. So with uh, the reality of the world we live in today, um, there's an entire portion of our workforce that is having to kind of rethink how they go about selling. Yeah. Um, I was trying to do some research and it wasn't too long ago that indeed had tens of thousands of job postings for outside field sales. Um, week ago they had 2000, that's 60 wow, plus dude. thousand roles that are now no longer being filled. And then there's people that need to fill those roles and they, they were excited about those opportunities. They have to rethink their, their livelihood, right? And so we're going to be talking about how those people can transition into a world that most of our listeners are probably going to be maybe a little bit more familiar with. Um, you know, I've only had inside sales in my, in my life. And so I don't know what it's like to go from outside to inside. So I'm hoping you can provide some, some tips and tricks that our, that our listeners can go through. So first want to set some guardrails. Um, Anybody not familiar with outside or field sales, talk to me. Just let's set up a quick definition. What is inside sales? What is outside sales? What is field sales? Let's just make sure we're all on the same page in the language we're using there. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just going to say inside sales is a, a, a centralized, or now it can be a decentralized, we'll call it primarily non-face-to-face -face sales motion. Some people call sales development reps inside sales reps, but, but for the sake of this, I'd say let's refer to this as people that are closing deals, Usually okay. they are of a certain size, you know, let's say 20, 50, you know, but again, this is changing. So we'll get into that. Yeah. Um, and they are never meeting the customer face to face or in a, you know, maybe a very, very rare instance meeting a customer face to face. They're closing a deal a hundred percent virtually um, and, and hosting most of their meetings that way. I think that's a good, maybe a good high level where a field sales organization is usually in a local market um, or traveling to a local market consistently in doing, you know, let's call it. And again, I want, I want to talk about, you know, before, before most recently, and then where we go, you know, it was probably 30 to 40% of their meetings face to face, maybe 50, yeah. 60. Um, if they were actually, if they're in market is probably 70, 80%. Um, and, you know, or if they're traveling to market, maybe it's 30 to 40%. So I think a lot of it's just how often you're actually interacting with a customer face to face. And I think a lot of times we also have equated there's a difference in skill or experience level between those groups as well, where one has been in the game for 20, 30 years, the other's been in the game for, you know, five to 10. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's probably a, at least a high level. I don't know if you'd add anything to it, but that, that's kind of how I, how I view it. Yeah. So it's interesting. You say face to face and, uh, I think of Zoom calls nowadays, like face-to-face -face meetings to me <laughs> means something yeah, exactly. different. Yeah. So that, I think that's accurate. I think of like Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, like that's, that's an outside sales rep in my mind, going and kind of meeting with people in person. Um, yeah, but there, so. I mean, that guy's sound like Swampland in Florida, whatever it was, <laughs> but, but no, uh, yeah, I mean, I think there's, there's different levels of outside field for this. I mean, yeah. but I think of an enterprise seller, I mean, these guys, these are, you know, men and women who have closed, you know, seven, eight figure deals. So 100%, you know, there's, yeah. there's a sophistication to that deal that, um, that, that exists, I would say too. It, it's almost like the pinnacle of a, a sales rep's career, right? That's what you strive for is to be that person out closing those deals, those sure. million dollar deals. Yeah, sure. absolutely. 
Perfect. So um, when I say you today, I'm talking about you personally or scaled as an organization, just so um, you know, we're clear on that. Of the companies you guys are talking today, how many are being tasked with or are coming to you asking for help on transitioning either their entire sales team or a large percentage of their sales team to this new inside sales world? Well, this has been a trend for a while. And I think that's an important call out. Like I remember I, like Salesforce had a you know, state of sales report from like 2016 or something or 17. And it already showed like, I think it was like, it was over, it was in the 40%. So it was like 40% of teams are moving more and more inside sales. So uh -huh. this has been a trend. We've seen more and more that people are willing to make five, six, seven figure purchases, never meeting somebody. Yep. And so we were already moving this way. Really what COVID did was just accelerate that. And, and it, it actually did one thing that, that I think we, I don't hear people talking about, but it's, it's the real reason why I think we'll continue to accelerate this even further. It trained a, a older generation how to use vis, uh, virtual technology. Interesting, okay. That buyer behavior change, not the seller behavior change, the buyer behavior, that CHRO who's like, I like my emails printed out or whatever. <laughs> she had to learn how to use Microsoft Teams, right? That, that CIO, <laughs> whoever, everybody has had to learn how to use virtual conferencing now. Before they would be like, yeah, well, it's fine. We'll set up a face-to-face -face meeting, et cetera. Now they've seen, holy crap, we can get stuff done. We don't yeah. need to meet everybody face-to-face. -face. There was a, there was a belief that, you know, face to face was um, a like the only way that things could happen. And that's just, I think I think COVID has proven that that's just not the case. So I think we're going to see, you know, maybe half at least in the, in the near term, um, a reduction in, in enterprise sales, you know, field reps, um, if not more over time, where again, because we're seeing people who are closing six and seven figure deals and never meeting in person. And guess what, my friends? Like, and again, no matter when this airs, I guarantee we're probably still not doing face-to-face -face meetings, right? Yeah. And guess what? In, in 12 months, we're still not really doing, we're going to be doing them a little bit. And so this trend is not going anywhere for some time. And so I think that's just an important mindset. Like, you know, you can hire people more and more, people are more and more used to this virtual experience and that's an okay thing, which means you don't need to hire those people that you know are only the ones out in the field making it happen. Now they do have a different skill set, and that's that's a, a different component. But I think more and more companies are going to move toward a, and maybe that's it. Maybe we need to stop saying inside an enterprise and just say virtual, right? Like, like mm. because it's not the 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 skill set still needs to be there, right? Like yeah. just because they're you know uh, not meeting face to face doesn't mean they need, don't need to also have the skill. They still need to have the skill. So it's more about like your level of virtual selling. It needs to, you know, you're going to have a t different teams with different skill sets around that is, is maybe what I get at. So that's an interesting point. I'm going to go just a, a little off my, my questions that I had. And so when I think of some of the tools that a seller has in a, a field sales role or a face-to-face -face role, you have a lot of tools that you, ha you have in your back pocket, such as being able to read body language, facial expressions, being able to read a room as it's called those things sometimes aren't available to you in an inside sales model. You might not be able to read body language if they don't have their camera on. You might not be able to see everybody in the room. And so that, uh, that's something I might want to dive into a little bit later is does the training that we need to take reps through need to change? Yeah. Is it psychology? Is it body language training or focusing on tone of voice as opposed to body language, we might need to rethink that, some of the- Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can go deep on that, man. I mean, I, in, and I'll give you a high- So for me, look, I started, you know, I was doing telemarketing in college, right? And then, you know, my first few jobs were in, you know, were inside sales roles. So you, those are the skills you learn, dude. I just, I can close my eyes and I can hear it. I can yep. hear it. Yeah, okay, this is interesting. Ah, okay, that person's not sold. <laughs> right. I can hear that, that, that pause. I can hear that. So maybe it's more of a sharpening. There's skills that I, I developed as someone who learned how to sell on the phone that for me, I don't need to see your face. I just need to hear you talk. And as soon as I hear you talk, I have, I have enough years of experience where I, I, I've got a direction on where, where your head's at. And I'm not, and I'm not afraid to ask the question. If I can't figure it out, say, Hey, Greg, tell me where we're at right now. You know? And, yeah. and so Yes, there, there are skills I think that are going to need to be either retaught or remembered 
that maybe they, the, the, the luxury of face-to-face -face affords you. So let's talk about those skills as this, this workforce is transitioning. So as you've gone through the process of engaging with companies over the past few years, are there ways to, to accelerate the way that companies have been making this transition? We've talked about COVID kind of being a, a catalyst to move from field outside to inside sales. I feel like companies are having to make that change quick. Like it's not mm -hmm. something that they can take a couple of years to do. So what did you I don't know, man. I see a lot of them still holding on, dude. I was on a call and I won't get into the details, you know, but I was on a call with a whole bunch of big time enterprise sales leaders from big companies, Workday, et cetera. And they're just waiting, counting the days till we're back in the field, man. Till we're back really? out there. And we're traveling, dude. I'm telling you, we're not ready to get, we, we're not there yet. And let me tell you why. Job security. <laughs> Who do you think makes the most money in the sales organization? The field sales VP. Well, uh -huh. if that person's now skill is virtual, whatever, they ain't paying you five hundred thousand dollars a year, dude. It had seven fifty million. Come on, man. Like, why the the value that you know you're paying the sales guy to go out and you know hunt and go take it down? If that goes away, well, maybe you're only worth two fifty now. I don't know. So I don't think we're there yet by any stretch. I think a lot of leaders are still holding on. They think we're going to be back at it again, if I'm being you know, perfectly candid. And I think it's, it's, we will to an extent, we will face to face. We'll be back. There's no, there's no, there, there truly is no substitute for it. With that said, it's just not, I don't think that's what buyers want that much anymore, especially now people are going to be cautious for the next two years, probably year and a half for sure. And so I don't think most companies are ready yet, Greg, if I'm being perfectly honest. I think there's still a, you know, yeah, we're going to continue to hire remote, et cetera. But no, of course, no, no, no. Well, we'll we got to have that field team. Yeah, for sure. So it's interesting about buyers. Um, I see I, it's almost every week that I see an announcement of a major company making work from home a permanent thing. How are you going to go meet these people in person if they're always remote, always working from home? Like, how are you going to go meet that? Go and have, meet, have a coffee and a dinner and go on the golf course and, you know, it's going to be the same type of thing. I mean, to some extent, you know, I don't know, maybe as commercial real estate takes a massive hit and maybe we'll reimagine the way that offices are built and shared spaces. I, I don't know. Um, yeah. So uh, it will still happen. Of course. Yes, it'll happen. And, and, and I think it'll just happen less frequently. Like let's say in a big enterprise deal, maybe I'd go out and visit this company four times. I think now it'll happen once, right? Maybe it'll be for that big meeting or maybe it'll happen twice. So I think there still will be plenty of in-person elements. I just think the, the, ne the necessity and the, nece the necessity for the volume of in-person is just, cra it, it, it's, it's like astronomically lower. And I, I don't think it's ever coming back. Right. I agree. I, I ever, because people don't want it. Dude, do you really think a buyer needs another friend in you know, Omaha, right? Or <laughs> wherever, like, no, like they're not, they don't care about you. They don't like, like, until you do business with them and like there's a lot of value in your network um and so i don't want to i'm not demeaning that at all but what i am saying is that most buyers need business value they need people who can help them with their business not another friend and i yep. feel like that generation would grew up as relationship builders and roi calculators and that's just not what buy buyers are already coming to the table like hey glenn um, yeah, I know I was on G2 and I know every single thing about you and your competitors. So why, let's, let's cut the wine and dine and help me to understand how this is different. And Glenn, I think is screwed because Glenn doesn't know how to have that conversation because he's used to relying on relationship building as a primary way to build rapport versus business acumen. And I was talking to a sales leader friend of mine, um, and, and he, I wrote this down. It's that enterprise sellers, I think the other big issue is they're going to have to have bigger conversations than they've ever had before as we come out of this because more and more executives are going to be involved. Like, whoa, 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 wait, what are we going to spend $2 million on? What are we like? So they're going to have to up their game. They're used to whining and dining the mid-level managers, directors, and now they've got an SVP coming in. I also think that if you're going to talk about other skill sets that I think that, that, that these field reps need to brush up on its executive presence. It's had to have an executive because the executives ex definitely do not want to go have a steak dinner with you the very no. first night. No, they definitely. Now Linda, who's you know trapped at home with the kids, Linda's pumped, <laughs> pumped for like you know for her and her team to go out and with you know and for you guys to entertain and like. But executives require a different level of acumen. 
And that kind of goes to, you know, kind of hand in hand with what I'm saying here. And so I feel like th th there are definitely some major gaps that I see, you know, coming down the, the, the pipe here around the level of conversations we're going to have to have and what, what customers really want from a, a seller. Interesting. So companies, what I'm hearing, need to reevaluate, maybe put ego aside in terms of what customers want from the buying experience. So not what we want as the, the selling experience, but mm -hmm. how are buyers changing? We need, to be, we need to acknowledge that. We need to maybe look at our training in terms of are we training some type of like psychology, body language component into our training. We also need to work on executive presence. Um, you know, how do we have an executive level conversation that typically you might not be used to having? And so when I came up with the idea of wanting to talk with you in this podcast, my immediate thought, Jake, was like tool sets. How do I teach someone to use yeah. sales loft? Yeah, um, exactly. But what I'm hearing is we, we need to, there's a couple of more really fundamental things that companies need to start addressing with this transitioning workforce. But, but the tools are a part of it. They're a perfect example of it, you know, where, okay, well, let me, how am I going to follow up with Jennifer and this one and Todd and this one? And like, of course you're going to use, you know, sales loft or outreach, you know, like why wouldn't you like the, the, the issue with those tools and, and, and the perceptional change. And obviously I think, you know, like we do, um, you know, we'll, we'll complete well over a hundred sales engagement implementations this year. Right. So I feel like outside of those companies, like we know more about this space than, than anyone. Uh -huh. And these are just containers of activities. And I think enterprise sellers have never quite understood that, that you could put 12, whatever. So the first touch point could be connect on LinkedIn. The second touch point could be mail them a handwritten letter. The third touch point could be make a phone call. The, the, the fourth touch point could be send them a Starbucks gift card. Yeah. We, the problem is we, we, people think of these tools as like email call. It's like, no, dude, that, that was like the, the one and two and 3.0. Now the sequences we're developing are like way more complex than that. And so enterprise sellers need to really embrace sales engagement in particular in sales navigator because sales navigator, you know, just think about, I can, I can sort and every day I can have my prospects. I can, I can sort in my home, home feed by lead shares. I can see if they shared a piece of content. I can go comment. I can interact. I can send them a DM. Hey, John, I just want to let you know I really enjoyed this. Actually, I saw Sue Smith over at Honeywell. She put out an article like this. I thought you might enjoy it. Boom, instant value. And so it's about, it's about what these enterprise sellers have to use is, is it's digital. Whether it's learning the digital tools or how to create relationships digitally, that is what I'm terrified for. The 55-year-old who's been carrying a bag for 30 plus years who you know, isn't on Facebook or Instagram and I'm not doing TikTok or whatever the hell it is. And they don't get that LinkedIn is, is, it is the modern networking event. It is a networking event in your city, in your industry every single day. And, yep. and if I went to you, Mr. And Mrs. Enterprise seller, and I said, Hey, guess what? In Albuquerque, I've got 200 directors of customer success in your territory that I sell to. Um, will you fly to Albuquerque uh, for a five minute speaking spot? <sighs> of course you are. Okay. Yeah. Well, you just connected with 200 directors of customer success why wouldn't you post an article on LinkedIn to them? It's the same thing. You're establishing yourself as a thought leader. So all these enterprise sales leaders need to get, and managers and leaders and VPs and reps got to get out of their head that LinkedIn is a social platform. It is a credibility establishment platform. It's thought leadership. It's a staff. It's just like how everyone knew Tim was the go-to guy for payroll in Austin, right? Guess what? LinkedIn gives you an opportunity to be the Tim around payroll in whatever the thing is. And I think too many people just have not connected the dots here. And this whole social selling 1.0 shit that people rolled out was a massive mistake because they, they just DM'd people and they didn't talk about adding brand and building a reputation on the platform and in your space. And that's where the real value is. That's where the, that's where the, 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 the inbound starts to come in. So I've talked with, with sales reps, Jake, and, and they go, well, that's, that's marketing's job. LinkedIn is marketing's job. And so what I'm hearing from you and I completely agree with is there's, I feel like the lines between sales and marketing is, is gone. Like to be in successful in sales, you have to be a good marketer on LinkedIn. Like you have to put out valuable content. You have to about understand your industry, about, about your industry, your not industry, about your company. Not about being, you know, you're not trying to be sales famous, dude. Yeah. That's the issue. Yeah, I, I, it makes absolutely no, like that mantra to me, I, I, it's so almost foreign to me. Like, it, it, like the whole, whole core of sales 
is as a sales per, a professional, you need to be an expert in the industry that you serve. It is required to be all time. If you want to be an all time salesperson, it is absolutely required that you know the challenges that your buyers face in the industry and what they do. Again, when you sit down and have a one-to-one -one with someone and you talk about the industry and what's happening, why wouldn't you share those same insights so then people think you know what you're talking about in the industry? Why wouldn't you take that five-minute speaking spot at the trade show? That's all LinkedIn is. It's not about being famous. Forget marketing, man. Forget who cares what marketing's doing? It's about Jake Dunlap, man. I don't care what marketing's doing. I'm trying to establish myself as an expert in IoT and facility operations, right? Or whatever it is you sell into, right? This is about me because guess what? That goes with me for my life. Yeah. Nobody will ever take this away from you, right? And I think what it, what it could do, which, is, which could be really interesting, right now, people just kind of hot jobs all over the place. Like this SaaS company, that SaaS company. Well, look, man, you spend a time, you got a network of 4,000 HR professionals. You might think twice about getting outside of HR. You, know, yeah. you might think you might, you might actually end up thinking, you know, maybe I'll stay in this cause I got a network of people and then guess what? Then you actually have a real Rolodex. It's not that fake stuff of like, I did business with Tanya once. These are people <laughs> that interact with your content on a regular basis, you know? So there's just a lot of opportunity right now and we're still early, early days on LinkedIn, early, early days. So understanding how to leverage, um, thought leadership platforms like LinkedIn. And so there's, there's yeah. a component of- Could be of other ones too, depending on where your, your market is. Yeah. Like it totally is. So you just do the research. Go look at your last 50 current customers. Go see where they're active. Not, and not just active in posting, but lurking, right? Like where are they commenting, liking, Comment, et like, yeah. You know, yeah. Because that's only, I think it's like, literally, I think it's 3% of people on LinkedIn post, something like that. It used to be 1%. It's, it's went up since COVID. Yep. But, you know, it's, um, so most people are lurkers. So they're there. Right, they're lurking. They'll watch your content. You know, they might not just put out their own content, and that's fine. Okay, so I'm hearing a couple different things here. So I had one of my good family friends. He uh, was in RV, like parts and equipment, door to door sales. He'd go from RV shop to RV shop, and he called me a couple weeks ago. He's like, you know, I, I want to get into inside sales. I know that's where I need to be. He's like 58 years old, and he's Love like. It what do I need to do to be an inside sales? And I had my perspective, but I've, all I've ever known is being an inside sales. I went from SDR right. to an account executive. What'd you tell him? What'd you tell him? So I said, the, the, the thing that I see as the main differentiator between successful inside reps and unsuccessful inside reps are the ones that listen more than they talk. I said, you have to get good at listening. And every person who's ever talked to me and said, I love talking to people, help me get into sales. I say, please don't get into sales. <laughs> <laughs> right. I say, you need to enjoy listening more than you talk. And I think that was a very different answer than the one he was expecting. Right. But that, that to me, being able to listen, like we talked about earlier and pick up on verbal cues and hear what people are actually meaning beyond what they're just saying is, is the thing for me that people need to focus on. But I was curious, from your perspective, you've had much more uh, experience in sales. Yeah. What's, what's the one thing you would give somebody as, as advice as to what they should focus on to make that transition yeah. late in life? Man, that's, it's, it's, that's a good one, man. And I think it's so different between like that example and maybe someone, again, who's been like an enterprise sales at Oracle or something like that. You know, With that person, I would remind them of the skills, that ability to knock on a door and someone shows up and you say, Hey, what's going on? <laughs> and then you got to build a report. You got to build a rapport instantly. That's universal. That skill yeah. transfers 100% to the inside sales. So, so remember that, um, two is, um, go into the, you got, you got to have a little bit of a beginner's mind and not be hard on yourself. You know, you've got to be able to say, look, this is just the way it is. You know, I'm sure there's probably some skill that I have right now that in 15 years, I'm going to have to retrain myself on it is what it is right? Whether it's about how to be a leader today, you know, and, and how you need to be a different style of leader than maybe you did 15 or 20 years ago. Um, the world changes. And, and I think just having a growth, you know, it's, it's tough at that age, but not judging yourself. I, you know, honestly, man, that's, that's the number one skill. If the number one skill is an enterprise rep is you can not judge yourself for not being great out of the gate and think about the things, that ability to build rapport up front, that's universal. That's universal. You, you hear the smile on the phone, 
you hear excitement. It's, it's the same. You close your eyes. You can picture, I can, I can picture this person's mood in front of me by speech cadence, how they talk or tone, you know, uh, all this stuff. Right. So, so take what you know, and then just think about, okay, well, I've been doing this door to door. So what's the difference? Well, I guess I can need to call them. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to talk to some gatekeepers. Okay. Well, what did I do when an office manager showed up and the last time? Well, I'd usually tell them this. Okay. Well, can I just do a version of that again? Okay. There's probably a lot more similarities than you think. Honestly, I don't think it's, do you still make a little small talk up front? Absolutely. Yeah. Do you talk about the kids <laughs> and the weather? Absolutely. It's all the same. So yeah. I think the key is it's not as different as you think. It, the tech might just be, take a little bit of time to get used to that. Like, you know, managing your day to day with tech versus, you know, maybe other tools. Yeah, absolutely. And I think technology nowadays, like, you know, I, I have sales loft, Salesforce, navigator, Vidyard, zoom info. They're all so integrated and they all work so, so awesome. well together yeah. that it's, it's really though. If companies set it up correctly, it makes it pretty easy to go in and understand how to interact with those tools. That's right. That's right. And I know a company that can help with that actually, Greg, uh, <laughs> yeah, called sorry, Scale. Scale. <laughs> um, but, but, but it, that's it, dude. If I went into sales today, uh, <laughs> I, I think about this. I'm like, I would destroy everybody. If I had tools that would allow me to remember to follow up with people to where people, and I could put in nurture sequences of like, this person's a follow up every once a month. This person's a follow up every two months. This person, uh, are you kidding me? I can send, and there's LinkedIn exists now, you know, like it would just be too easy. I could, I think I could probably work one hour a day. I think, I think an average account executive a job, I could work one to two hours a day and be ruthlessly efficient with how I manage my pipeline especially as an SDR, no doubt as an SDR. Yeah. I just looking at the data, I've always looked at my own data, you know? So again, that, that's something that's always been hardwired in me. I look at my sales cycle. I look at where I get stuck. I look at my conversion percentages. That's always been higher, hardwired in me. And so now that there's tools that can help you to do that even easier, it's just like, there's no excuse for not getting better frequently. Love it. Well, want to wrap up here. So main takeaways for me, we need to maybe rethink some of the things that we're training, right? So let's not just focus on um, the specifics of the sale or the product, but are we, how are we addressing things like tone of voice and picking up on body language, mm -hmm. eye contact? How do we read a room on a Zoom call, right? What, what are we doing when we have that situation? How do we use LinkedIn, not as a social channel, but as a thought leadership in your space, right? Not talking about your product, but how are you adding value as a thought leader? Um, we have to consider what the buyer wants in a sales cycle nowadays, right? It's not, not about how we want to sell. And I know this has been talked about for a while, probably past 10 years, buyer's journey's changed. Like the buyer's journey's really changed now, right? So buyers want something different and we have to acknowledge that. And then finally, like are the companies that, if you're going in and interviewing a company, you should be asking about their tech stack. You should be figuring out, Absolutely. do they have the tools that you're going to need? So you need to do some self-education around what successful companies are deploying to help new sales reps manage their day. So did I miss anything that you think would be important? I think you for nailed it, man. That was, that was one of the best recaps I've heard in one of these. So I think you got it. And I think for everyone out there, it's all good. It is what it is. Look, the world changed. Yep. Deal with it. It's time. <laughs> it's time for us to stop worrying about Look, we're all dealing. We got our kids. We got to put on Zooms. We got to do this stuff. It's time to start making progress forward, right? And so I think for a lot of people, it's just accept, there's a little bit of acceptance that needs to happen too. Yeah, love it. Well, I appreciate your time today, Jake. We're excited to share your words of wisdom with the uh, the rest of the sales world and uh, keep kicking ass. I love what you're doing on LinkedIn and it's awesome seeing uh, your nuggets of wisdom you put out. Awesome, man. Looking forward to it. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone.